Empaths and narcissists, are they two sides of the same coin? Do empaths and narcissists go together like pineapple and pizza? One sweet, delicious and good for you, the other very naughty, very bad, but also can be equally delicious. The difference between pineapple and pizza is that pineapple is one of the world's best anti-inflammatories and it will take things away from you, similar to an empath, Whereas at 10 slices of pizza, if you're anything like me, you'll have a pot belly and it'll bring up a whole host of an emotions and an addiction that's so deliciously tempting, you'll wonder how you survived before it's alert. And that's just the same as a narcissist. So why are these two polar opposites so magnetically drawn together? Why does the narcissist run on planet crazy? Does the narcissist hold the matrix construction together? Can a narcissist ever heal from their deep fragmentation and disconnect from essence? Or are they here to evolve our soul's expansion and the collective? Let's explore. If you are new to this channel, welcome. I'm Anastasia and this channel is dedicated to questioning and discerning some of the popular topics within psychology, new age and spirituality. So if you are easily offended by questioning the norm or questioning mass thinking, then perhaps this channel isn't for you. But if you are looking to grow your discernment, integrate your humanness and essence, hit the subscribe button below. To my regulars, thank you so much for coming back. I sincerely value and appreciate all your support. So to any trolls out there, please stay cute. Let's keep trolls how they were back in the 90s. And to any agents of the matrix out there, I do not have all the answers, nor does anybody, nor to you. Please do your own research, use your own discernment, take what resonates and leave the rest. So, narcissists and empaths, the same but different. Empaths and narcissists both sense what you feel. They can both intuitively sense what you are thinking, what you are feeling, and they can spot your vulnerabilities like an eagle spots its prey. However, this is where the narcissist can be very attractive. So when you first meet an, uh, a narcissist and they all of a sudden they can, you know, they can see into your soul, they can they can know what your mind is thinking and your heart is singing. That can be very very attractive. However, the difference between an empath and a narcissist is that empath will never use your perceived weaknesses as their own food and a weapon to annihilate you. An empath will want to help you and want, will care about your pain. And on the flip side of this, a narcissist will use your pain to drive you insane. And in some aspects, it's an inversion of one another, which we see a lot of in this reality. One will want to piece you together and the other will leave your heart fractured apart. So I know many of you out there will say, well, um, a broken heart is where the light enters you, which could ultimately lead to piecing back your fragmented parts in this life and beyond. And perhaps this is where the, the old saying, one man's poison is another man's medicines come from. And in that sense, I can see why some people would view them as the same side of the coin and it could be argued that it's all our perception. However, we must remember that truth is objective and there is an objective truth that there are extreme narcissists on this planet that are pure evil. And I'm not sure these narcissists will ever heal unless they start rejecting the iconic forces that are ruling them. I don't think that we should ever whitewash evil with whimsical statements such as it's all divine, as it completely negates the person who has suffered at the hands of evil. When we say these whimsical statements, we're neglecting that person's traumatic part. And instead of offering care and support to a victim, we're using toxic positivity and spiritual bypassing. So please don't use these statements to someone's traumatic part. It's it's not human, it's not nice, it doesn't feel nice if you've been through anything that's traumatic to hear these things such as your soul called it in or it's all a gift. However, what I will say is that evil is lifting the veil in this world at the moment and it could be argued that it's assisting in our soul's evolution and perhaps that 
evolution of our soul is that we must make a stand against evil. We can all play our part in rejecting from this evil by withdrawing our support and our energy. So if your favorite actor, director, musician, religious leader or political figure and the latter two are both systems of control anyway, so you should withdraw regardless. If any of these people have been convicted of the unforgivable, then we need to withdraw our energy and our resources from that field. And by doing that, you are playing your part in evolving the collective healing. We need to take the money and energy and attention away from these people and we need to put it in the correct hands. And as I mentioned earlier, a narcissist will see the weak spots in others and exploit them for their own gain. And much of this current reality is an inversion which explains how the narcissist got to centre stage, how they got to the positions of power in all walks of life and how they will use your pain as their power. And this is why I always encourage people to turn their own pain into power so those fragmented and fractured parts can be returned home to you. Because a true narcissist doesn't have their own independent supply of essence. So their supply of life force energy is from feeding from others. And this is why we see high ranking individuals stealing the life force from children and why it is our collective responsibility to face the trauma of what is happening to the innocent ones in this world. And instead of using love and light as a tool to bypass and to distract us, the brightest thing that we could ever do is to face the trauma inside and out before we all end up in a Clinton body bag. So what I'm describing here is an extreme version of narcissists and most empaths, they don't want to do a dark dance with a monster. And at this point, I really don't know if evil is put in this world for our own soul growth or if we're in the upside down world. My gut feeling is perhaps there is an element of both. And I'll explain how I think narcissists are created on an astral level later. And it's important to point out that there is a difference between a true narcissist and somebody with a narcissistic part or narcissistic traits. And we also need to understand that there are mental health issues. And I, don't, I really don't like to use that term, but for ease of understanding, I will do whose symptoms can be confused as narcissistic personality disorder, also known as NPD. So a true narcissist, which is what the parasites that be that run this world currently, they may have a difficult um, time healing because of the way they're created on an astral level, and perhaps they can never heal because of what runs their show. However, somebody with a narcissistic part which uses that part to protect a deeper emotion such as guilt and shame can heal. And perhaps this part can transform into an empathic part once it's released the burden it's been protecting. And again, this is where the similarities between narcissists and empaths might be seen, but a true narcissist is the polar opposite of a, of a true empath. And I feel much of the Matrix program programming is pumped into encouraging people's narcissistic parts because we have to remember that the, the matrix feeds off unhealed trauma. So the more we engage in constant selfies and absorbed into the me, 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 me program, the more the matrix can thrive. If we heal this part collectively, I have a strong feeling we will be living in a completely different reality. One that will be governed by natural law and people's soul wounds and soul purpose made a priority and our humanness and essence integrated. With the rise of the internet, we need to be mindful of projecting a diagnosis of MPD onto others. So, you know, we've all become kind of mini psychiatrists and psychologists since the internet and I include myself and I have been guilty of doing this in uh, the past when I projected my own personal pain and um, cast the NPD stamp onto a past partner. And as I mentioned earlier, there are some mental health conditions such as borderline personality disorder, NPD, that have elements which are similar to NPD, so narcissistic personality disorder. And if you research NPD, you'll find in its highest aspect, it can be the shamanic mystic part of a person who can move in between worlds and I know how tempting it is to use the internet to soothe our own, by, uh, our own pain by self-diagnosing those that we have conflict and have grief with. But perhaps we um, 
should focus that energy on our own healing and focus on bringing our own individual light to the world because that's where light comes from, it comes from inside of us. And another aspect which is uh, an overlap with the narcissist and empath is it's all about me. So empaths, just, just hear me out because I can, I can feel that if there's any empaths that are listening to this, they'll be like, oh, that's a horrible thing to say. And I really understand um, why you would feel like this as I have a very strong empathic part. But just hear me out. Empaths internalize nearly everything, including other people's pain. So an empathic person will tend to their thoughts tend to merge with another's and this is where um, empaths can also um, be misdiagnosed with MPD because they also, um, people who have um, borderline personality disorder, when they're around others their thoughts can merge into others as, as empaths do. So it's really important as an empath that you, you, know, you set clear boundaries and you really understand yourself inside and out. So it's really important that an, an empath does its uh, does their inner work. So to know themselves deeply, like I said, so they don't overburden them, burden themselves. And know thyself should be the, men, the mantra for every single empath. So know what's yours and integrate it. Know what isn't and reject it. Know what triggers you and work with it. Know what when you're feeling overwhelmed and give yourself the permission to rest. And Know that you're not to blame for everything and if somebody takes your heart the wrong way that it's none of your business and that you can stand strong regardless of what others think, say or feel about you. And some sometimes empaths, it's, it's not you, it's actually them. However, on the other side, the narcissist also, also thinks everything is about them but rather than internalise their feelings, they will externalise it. So they're very much the same but opposite. They often lack the emotional maturity to take personal responsibility for their own actions and they lack the empathic understanding to not project their stuff onto others and they use other people's energy and pain to survive. So rather than retreat as an empath would need to do to regain a sense of self and recharge their own bat batteries, other people become the battery for a narcissist. So their life force energy is extorted from those around them rather than from within. And this leads me on to how empaths and narcissists are created. So if you ask this question to a psychologist or a psychiatrist, they will tell you that they are both created from childhood wounding. And on some level, I would absolutely agree with that, that those who have empathic and narcissistic parts, that is created in childhood. However, I feel true empaths and true narcissists on a soul level are created very differently. I feel empaths are helper souls which are created from the divine feminine creator which then it enters the matrix field as a helper being to help humanity. Not a special being as the new cage movement would herd people into believing, which in itself is narcissistic, but a soul whose gift is feeling and they use this gift to help others. And many beings, maybe all beings perhaps, have access to becoming a helper soul if they choose to do so. Or maybe that's my utopia thinking saying that, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. But a true narcissist on the other hand, these, I feel these are created in the in-between lives area and they are fragments of soul beings and therefore there is a disconnect from the divine feminine creator energy. And perhaps they keep the matrix constructs into place and are access portals for archonic energies that are currently reigning over planet Earth. Some say that these beings are here to help evolve humanity and on some level I can see how that they can assist helper souls in soul evolution. Do I think it's right that archonic forces are ruling planet Earth? Of course not. Do I think Team Human can take the reins back? Yes, I do. And how do we do that? We do that through healing. We do that through integrating our parts in this life and beyond. And we do that by bringing the light that's within us, that's, that's inside of us. We, do, we bring that light forward. So we bring that light out into the world. And that light isn't outside of us. So this is why I always say to people to discern the light beings outside because we have that divine feminine creator spark 
within us and it's not outside of us. So I will leave it there today, my friends, and I would just like to add that I love pizza in small doses. I can also enjoy people's narcissistic parts in small doses. But what I do not like is pineapple and pizza together. So I don't know whoever thought that was clever. So until next time, I wish you well in turning your pain into power, wounds into wisdom, and slavery into sovereignty.